Hello everyone, this is Daryl20, and welcome to episode 5 of Daryl20's Let's Play Satisfactory series. Ho oh, ho ho, look how much. Look at all the cables I have. I love it. I love it. We've got lots and lots of cables. Uh, in today's episode, I want to rapidly improve my iron production for the purposes of starting to craft all the tier 2 materials that we need to get. Uh, last episode, we, we did a lot of automation with iron, and we significantly started, uh, you know, building a factory floor and some foundations and a bunch of stuff. Um, and verticality is not a bad idea. I will probably be getting to that at some point in the future. But for now, I kind of want to just lay out um, a basic foundation, and then we'll probably tear everything down and rebuild it anyway, because what's a factory game if not tearing down your entire factory and rebuilding it from scratch? That's kind of what factory games are all about, isn't it? So that'll probably happen at some point. For now, however, I want to I want to tear up a few things. How's my inventory looking? Not bad. Yeah, so I'm going to clear up my hub. Goodbye, hub. Oh, my fuse shut down. Well, yeah, because I just took down a major component of my power production. Uh, I'd like to get my hub up and running uh, up here on my on my main platform-ish thing. So I'm going to replant my hub here. Now, what I'm thinking is I might want the power parts of the hub to be on the back, kind of. So I'm thinking here might not be a bad idea. Does that look nice? Yeah. And then we can have the the power things over here. Does that seem fair? I like that a little bit. That seems pretty cool. Yeah, we get all kinds of, hey, look what we've got. New things we can play with. They're the same old things that we've been playing with, but you get the idea. Uh, I'm going to put you guys back away. Um, we should, we should reinstill uh, the power, aka the fuel, and we should probably place down um, some more power production biomass burners. I'm thinking maybe we want to kind of align them in a smartish way. Well, that, that kind of starts overriding my slopes that go down there, doesn't it? Yeah, shouldn't be too bad. Or do I want to rotate this and have the power kind of in the back? That might not be a, a bad idea, to be honest with you. Maybe that's what I'll do. I'll do similar to that, uh, but the power will be in the back of the hub, right? So that's under the special tab. Hub and space elevator are two special blocks. Boop, boop, rotate him. How does that feel? Yeah, I definitely like this a little bit better. That way, if we need to expand our biomass, I'm not sure how many biomass burners we're going to get before we, you know, upgrade to something better. Coal. <coughs> Coal. But uh, at some point, you know, we're going to stop needing biomass, and that'll be a very happy day, because it'll mean no more manual fueling, right? Let's throw three biomass burners there. Why not, right? Uh, so you guys are going to connect into a power line you're gonna connect to one two and you're gonna connect to the one for now now power absolutely will not throttle itself in update three the previous version of this game um power did self-throttle um i don't know if it's true of biofuel i feel like i'm not sure if biofuel self-throttles at all i think it does because, I mean, it's not burning right now. So it says it burns in 15 seconds. So let's see what happens if I connect you to something very simple. I'm going to disconnect this line. And I'm going to connect this power line to here. Now, are you guys all burning like crazy? I you know you're not going to run because you don't have any. So I'm going to steal this copper out of here and void it. All right, you don't have any... Um, well, then let's do this. You ready? Do, 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 do. I want this to run and see what happens to our power usage. Because I'm trying to understand how power works in the game now. It has definitely changed. So, you guys don't really look like, like you're burning much fuel. So that's cool. Maybe biomass still does self-throttle. Which would be good news. It means we don't have to worry too much about biomass. Yeah, I like that. It looks like it is self-throttling, which is nice. Which is definitely nice-ish. Okay, that's cool. And I guess then, I, I don't have quite enough solid biofuel to fill this fifth one, but I don't super need it either right now. So let's connect you back up to there, and this should bring my entire
Do what now? Bring everybody online, no problem. Yeah, max consumption's at 81, capacity's at 100, so we're actually doing just fine. We won't be for very long, very, very shortly, once we get all the, all the other things up and running that I told you guys about. Um, it's going to be a bad time, but... Like I said, sometimes you're going to see trees popping through your buildings there. So, be prepared to deal with that. Cool. Alright, so that's moving our uh, hub over to somewhere a little bit more centralized. I'm going to go ahead and pop you guys away. Um, I've honestly never done the flower petal coloring thing. You can also use them for biomass, I think. But, you know, those of you who are more decoratively minded might find them, you know, cool to play with. So what we said we were going to do today was work towards automating some of the tier 2 production lines. So step 1, I think, would be getting more iron. Because we have two very small iron miners right here. They're the weakest and the worst of the iron mines. There's nothing we can do to really improve them um, until we get further in the game. There's a, there's a second tier of miner that will... I want to say bump it up by 50% or maybe double it. I forget what part two miners do, but it's a long way into the future. Uh, what we should really be doing is tapping into those three iron ore mines over there. If you see, once the thing gets there, there's, there's three little iron mines right there that we're going to want to tap into. So let's go investigate that little area and see what kind of fun we can have. Now, uh, can I... Do, 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 do. And I also like cutting down trees in my way. And remember, the chainsaw works in like an area of effect kind of thing. So it doesn't only cut down the, the thing you're looking at. Like if I look at these leaves, it's going to cut down that tree to the left. See? A very nice mechanic, by the way, which I very much love. How did you... How did I wind up doing that? There we go. Doesn't that look nice? I mean, it clips into the ground a little bit, but that's okay. I don't mind. Goodbye. Ha ha ha. Alright, now let's see what these uh, iron nodes over here look like. Because there's a couple of them, right? Looks like it's getting to be nighttime. Hello, sunset. Uh, we've got three nodes, a uh, normal, wee, a normal, and a normal. So remember, normal tier one miners will be able to pull up uh, 60 iron ore per minute. So, so twice what an impure node would do. Uh, pure nodes, by the way, I think are double that. So it's 120 for a tier one miner. So if we found a pure node, it would be even better. But obviously keep in mind that, you know, the further away the nodes are, the more difficult it's going to be to move that iron ore over. Sun's going down. So let's go ahead and place down our three miners here and figure out exactly how we want to do this. Because there's a little bit of changing that we're going to want to do. So first off, let's get three portable miners so we can place down three tier one miners, and then we'll figure it out, okay? So, miner mark one, we're gonna want one here-ish, here, and here, okay? Now, each one of these is capable of mining 100, or, or 60 ore per minute, right? That's the maximum that we can handle on our tier one belts. So if we want to run a belt all the way up there with more than one miner at a time, we're going to need to upgrade to tier two belts. That'll allow us to connect two miners. Uh, and then, you know, it'll be a while before we get to tier three belts, I think. So we need to keep that in mind. So if we want to run these belts up there, uh, it's going to involve basically three conveyor belts, right? We're going to need to do something like this, or we're going to run out, um, you know, something like this. And then we can bring our conveyor belts all the way over here. 
Now, there's a couple ways we can bring this, right? And, and when I'm doing something like this across the terrain, I don't need it to be perfect. But as you can see, there's a limit to how far belts can go before you need to place down that, that belt anchor. So make sure that you've got, you know, some semblance of sense there, right? Um, there you go. Now, what we could do is bring this guy, like, right along to here-ish. And then we can tap in a vertical conveyor lift, right? And run this all the way up here. Rotate it so that it's facing this way. And then bring it along to about here. Cool. So that's one way to do it. Now we're awfully close to our hub. And as a reminder, we're going to want three of these lines coming in. So we want to be a little cognizant of that, right? Like thinking that through uh, pretty well. So do we want that and then running it all the way across here? Does that make some semblance of sense? Man, I got to get that smart mod installed. It's a little bit beta and I want to hold off until it's a little bit less beta. I think before I add it, but we'll see. So what I'd like to do is get those belts from over there, just basically running all the way over to here, and then tap into them with, uh, you know, a couple smelters. So remember, each one of those miners does 60 ore per minute, so that means it's two smelters per miner, not one, because they're normal nodes, not in pure nodes. Cool? So keep that in mind. Uh, I might wind up having to move this uh, to make this work a little bit better. But what I'll probably do is, like, we can bring this guy, kind of curve him around here, right? And this will be our first dude, right? And then we'll expand out the flooring here. And then, like, our second dude would come in here-ish, right? And, and, and go, go this way. And then our third one from there would come over this way, up here, and across that way. That might be the way we wind up doing it. I kind of like that plan, so that tells me that I want to dismantle all this stuff. And remember, you can totally hold left control to, to mass dismantle things. And that's a lot cooler, right? So it's getting a little dark out, I think. Uh, the moon's coming up, which is nice, but it's going to be uh, a little bit before it's daytime. But I like the idea of at least expanding out our base. Cool. We'll just get the, the foundations laid here. Do 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 do. Awesome. Okay, so next plan will be to get uh, what should we automate? first from the assembler. I think one of the, the more important ones to automate first would probably be the reinforced plates. Those are most important, I would say. Modular frames are also going to be important, but they're built off reinforced plates. So we want to get reinforced plates first for that reason. We're definitely going to want rotors and smart plating, but reinforced plates clearly is a big important thing. So let's get those going first. So let's look at the math on reinforced plates again, just to remember. We need 60 screws per minute, and we need 30 plates per minute. So there's a couple ways we could go about doing this. Um, we could just do like a, a, we could do like a main bus kind of system where we make a bunch of iron plates and then split them off into multiple assemblers for different things. Um, though I don't think iron plates, if we're looking at the assembler recipes, I don't think iron plates are used for anything but reinforced iron plates, right? Modular frames use the reinforced iron plates. So that'll be like, you know, the next iteration of that. We're going to need a lot of rods and, and screws, though, is what it's telling me, right? And that's also reinforced iron plates for the smart plating. So I think what we'll do is we'll turn all the iron plates we produce from this line. It, we'll do, like, we'll do 60 iron ore turning into 40 iron plates, and that'll go directly to reinforced iron plates. And that might be cool. Yeah, I like that plan. And then we'll bring in another 60 iron ore to turn into rods and screws, and we'll use those rods and screws to make everything else. It's all, I, that sounds good. All right, cool. Now, something I wouldn't mind doing real quick, just because I happen to look and notice we have the resources for it pretty easily, uh, I'd like to do the field research um, milestone. 
Let's select that guy and do the things. I made sure to craft everything we need. So that's nice and ready to go. Boom, launch that rocket up. Field research unlocked. Milestone reached. The molecular analysis machine, referred to as the MAM, will allow R&D to provide new technologies, items, and buildings based on samples collected in the field. To ensure a greater chance of success during exploration, an upgraded tool belt has been provided, as well as an object scanner and beacons. Hooray! Note, the object scanner requires calibration via the MAM to enable detection of specific objects. So this is cool. One of the things is it gave me an extra hand slot, which means I can now store two items in my hand slots. Important note, when an item is in your hand slot, it's not taking up an inventory slot. See? So that's an important thing to pay attention to. So now I can mouse wheel between, you know, the berries I want to eat and the Xeno Zapper. Yeah. Uh, the other thing we just got access to is the MAM, which is under special, I believe. Boom. And the MAM is where you can do research. Uh, based on items you find in this world that we happen to find ourselves on. Um, and just like the craft bench and everything else, we can break it and, and replace it. Each MAM um, is unique to the player that placed it. Uh, so here's an important tip. You can start researching something in the MAM, deconstruct it, and then place some MAM somewhere else and pick up where it left off. So uh, that's pretty cool. So you can see there's a bunch of um stuff to unlock here so there's like a whole alien organization or uh, um system here there's flower petals there's nutrients um all kinds of cool stuff so for example if we wanted to research nutrients um you know let's let's start with alien organisms right so i'm gonna i'm gonna analyze that alien carapace that we found let's grab one of those we'll just grab them all because why not uh, and we can just analyze it. Now, some things take longer to research than others. This one happens to be three seconds. So click Start Research. It's going to do the researching, and then it's done. Analysis complete. Hooray! So we just learned how to make biomass. Recipe unlocked. Check that out. Um, now, let's see. We need actually we need five of these. New research available in the yeah. map. We need five of the or ten of these carapaces to unlock how to make biomass. But it'll give us a research um, that allows to turn the alien carapaces into biomass. Cool? So this is going to play a role a little bit more in the future. There's going to be a lot of really good stuff that we can find in the MAM. So that's going to be huge for us. Right? Uh, but for now, I just wanted to get that mostly because it gave me more inventory spaces and an extra hand slot. So, you know, just a little... I was like, hey, I can get that very easily based on my current, you know, inventory and whatnot. So that's, that's why I did that. Cool. Let's uh, make sure that we have enough resources here. You notice that all my automations are going very smoothly. Look how much look how much stuff we've got. Holy cow. I am loving it. This is why you automate all the things, folks. This is why. So let's start with getting ready to turn... Um, let's, get, let's get two more constructors here, right? So I'm going to space this out a little bit because we don't need to be, like, super tight on spacing. Uh, and you know what else I need to do is I need to craft more, um, probably going to need to craft a, a lot more of those reinforced iron plates and probably a handful of rotors too. So I'll be back in a minute after I do a little bit of manual crafting. All right. So as mentioned, um, I think what we want is two sets of conveyors and remember to hold control to make snapping a little bit cleaner right and each one of these conveyors will wind up having their own dedicated smelter or, or constructors i mean right so you're going to be iron you're going to be iron you're going to be iron plates and you're going to be iron plates for a total of 40 iron plates being produced at a moment here right that's an important important note we're making 40 iron plates per minute um, and remember, we're going to need, for the, uh, for the, for the assembler here, we're going to need 30 iron plates per minute. So there's a thing we'll be able to do that will make sense in a little bit that will align nicely with that. You'll see what I mean in a moment. So you're both in charge of iron plates, right? Um, and then what we want to have is we want a splitter here with the input on the back. You're going to go there. You're going to go there. And you basically, I want to come all the way 
straight if you can. Oh, by the way, these, these poles can go up a little bit if you want them to be more vertically sloped. How's that look? Not terrible. A little bit, a little bit slanty, but not terrible, right? So there's your iron plates, right? Um, now what I'm thinking is I would want to then bring up a second batch. So I'm gonna prepare all this and then we will bring the iron ore up. How's that sound? Like a plan? I hope so, because that's 100% what we're doing. Now this is gonna be a lot of space, I know for sure. So I'm gonna prep this out. It's at points like this where you wish you had the smart mod installed. I keep talking about it. I keep wishing I had it. I'm just holding off a little bit longer until it's a little bit more stable. Do, 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 do. Sweet. Okay. Now, that's going to bring that up. Now, we're going to replicate what we have over here, right? So, remember, it was... Um, now, we're going to need a lot of screws. I'm just letting you guys know. We're going to need a lot of screws. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the 60 ore that we have here and I'm going to split it again just like I had, but we're going to have two of these and then four constructors. I think that would be cool. Let's make sure we've got enough screws to make four constructors. I'll be right back. So what I'm going to do here, basically, is going to be two constructors right next to each other and then a little bit of a cap and two more constructors. That gap completely arbitrary completely arbitrary but we're gonna try to line this guy up here and these guys up I want to I'm trying to be somewhat in the middle All right so is that somewhat in the middle eh, not great that feels pretty good Eh, that one's off by what I would call a very small amount as well. Probably as best as you're going to get. Okay, so then we're going to want a splitter here. And the splitters line up too, which is nice. Let's make sure this is aligned up properly. There we go. So you're going to go in there, you're going to go there, and you're going to go there. Now, very quickly, we're going to need Tier 2 belts. Very quickly, we're going to need Tier 2 belts, and I'll tell you why. All right, so let's see. If I want iron rods here, right? So these four constructors are making iron rods, or at least they will be once I do this, right? Now, here's a note on iron rod production versus screws. Rods make 15 per minute, okay? Uh, constructors for screws use 10 per minute. So we need three constructors per two for rods, for screws, right? And also note that if we have three sets of screws going on at a time, that's 120 screws per minute, which means very rapidly running into the need for tier two belts, which is going to be our next major focus. Like that's literally the next thing I'm going to make sure I, I, I unlock is tier two belts. So what I'm thinking we'll do, right, is let these rods here come out for rod production, because remember we need rods um, for modular frames and we need rods for motors. Okay. Um, and smart plating is just, you know, rotors and reinforced arm plates, right? So we need rods for things and we need screws for things. So what I think I'll do is basically have three sets of constructors. Now I haven't entirely decided how I want this to lay out, but I think we'll just kind of wing it. And somebody tell me if this is, yes, that's cool, okay. That's not how I'm gonna do it, obviously, but we're gonna have something like this, right? And what we can do Here's how we're gonna do this, you ready? I'm gonna have a merger here. Okay, with the output going off in that direction. 
and I'm going to copy this merger here, even though it doesn't look like it's needed, but it'll make things look a lot nicer, okay? And this is the way I like to build things. You guys can obviously build things however you want. So basically, the rods will come out here. It'll merge with nothing, but come this way. The rods from this belt will merge with this output and come out here, okay? And then what I'm gonna wanna do And I'm just kind of winging this a little bit. But I think what I'll do is I'll have a splitter lined up here. With the input coming on that side. Okay. And then the splitter will basically do this for the screws. Okay. And then we can match here. And here. And this splitter will be like this. So then watch what happens. You ready? Now we need tier two belts for this to work properly. Okay. But what will happen is we will make... 15 iron rods here. They will merge with this merger with the 15 here to make 30 iron rods. The 30 iron rods will split so that 15 will go here and 15 will go here. But this guy really only needs 10 per minute. Okay. So eventually this will back stuff and we will get 10 in here and then 20 will wind up going this way. And this guy will split the 20 in half and 10 iron rods here and the other 10 go this way, which will wind up going in here. Now, is this splitter needed? No. Is this merger needed? No. Neither of them are necessary, but it makes it a lot cleaner belt-wise and a lot more repeatable. Because if we decide in the future, you know what, we need more of these, we can easily expand this system and quickly and easily add another splitter. So while technically this splitter and, con and merger here aren't necessary, 100% makes just for much cleaner design cool and then our rods will come out here we'll probably have a merger you know something like you here right and we'll make sure the output faces that way and then we'll have a merger here now how are you misaligned already but basically merger here with output going that way and merger here with output going that way. Okay. So even though mergers aren't super necessary here, in some cases, it's it's a nice way to, you know, keep things tidy. And that's kind of my goal, right? So here we're going to need 30 iron, right? But that actually kind of very perfectly all lines up, doesn't it? That actually feels really good, as a matter of fact. And then we can take our screws that are being produced there, combine them with the iron plates from over here, right? And we're going to do the same thing with the mergers, right? We could have the merger coming this way, and I'm going to have the merger going out that way. I don't know why you decided to be silly about that, but... Yes, so merger coming out here, merger going out there, All right? So he'll come over to this guy, he'll do this, and then our iron plates will come out here. Now, let's get a nice perspective on this, just so you guys can see what this is actually going to look like. Right? So an upper perspective might make it easier for those of you who might not be following or understanding. But basically, 30 or, or 60 irons coming in here, 30 smelted, 30 smelted, 30 turning into 20 plates, 30 turning into 20 plates for a total of 40 plates coming out here. Okay. Then we're going to have another 60 iron coming up, splitting here 30 and 30. This 30 will turn into 15 and 15 rods, 15 and 15 rods. Okay, for a total of 30 rods coming out this way, 
30 rods coming out this way and then 10 rods turn into 40 screws so 40 40 and 40 is 120 screws per minute and they will get their own set of mergers in the front shortly so should we um be hyper cool about this can i make this fall a little tiny bit of fall damage i like the warning that you get on the top of the screen when you uh take fall damage it says warning fix it property damage detected i feel i feel very cared for by fix it the organization that I have unfortunately chosen to work for here. Uh, so that's the plan. So let's go bring another set of 60 iron. Now, once we get tier two belts, we can turn that into 120 iron coming up on one belt, which we will probably do. But in order to get tier two belts, we're going to need a lot of reinforced plates. And boy, are they annoying to make. So yeah, that's a thing that's going to change pretty quickly. So let's, let's see, you're all the way over there. I can totally, oh, I can't afford. So that's a... That's a big note. All right, guys, we are back. And I'm basically just running a line over from my second miner over to here. That's going to kind of basically just match this setup. All right? And then we can snap that dude onto there. You know what I need to do? I need to build out my ramps. I think I could pull this. Yeah, it should be fine. Maybe I want to bump this out a little bit more, just in case. How's that look? Pretty good? And don't forget, you can clear out these underlings. There's, there's a single block we'll be able to place eventually, but not yet. That will make you be able to do that all in one go. Right? So remember, middle click to copy. We can just bring this guy up right here. And then we can bring you right about to here. And what I'm going to do is try and just mirror this whole setup, I think, would be cool, right? So we can have another line. It's not perfectly straight, but that's OK, right? I don't know how perfectly straight we want it to be. It doesn't have to be perfect. Do, 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 do. <laughs> cool. Um, now, instead of doing this, if we want it to be a little bit neater, right? A little bit neater, um, we could just do the two splitter thing. Right, so what we could do, and this is definitely a lot nicer looking, but we could have, you know, splitter like you, and splitter like you. And then this guy. Eh, too far. Here. That feels pretty tight. Yeah, I like that. I like I like to try and keep the angles nice and rightish, but it doesn't have to be perfect, you know. How's that look? Not bad. So that'll be your two splitters, right? Um, doing that to that, and then this is all in place and ready to go, right? So I think I'm gonna wait for daytime just so I can show this during the day. But I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna kick this guy on and get them ready to go. Now, if we wanted to just tidy this up a little bit, what we could do is kind of match this guy's lineup, right? So you can come in from the back, and this comes in from that side, right? So you're going to split into here, you're going to go there, and you're going to go there. And does that seem a little bit cleaner? I feel like it does, right? Yeah, and then he'll split that way. I like that. I like that. Now, none of these guys have power, so I should get them going, too. But let's do it during the day. All right, this should be pretty bright. Now, we are also getting really close to the end of the episode here. But I want to get everything up and running, if I may. So I'm going to, you know, get these guys ready to work. Sweet. 
So now let's do here. I'm gonna have these two. Let's see. Here and here. And then this one can split off to these two. There's somewhere I can sneak this thing in, I'm sure. There it is. Here and here. And then this guy can move forward. Right? And my grid shut down probably ran out of fuel. I had to AFK for a few minutes, so things have been running for a bit. Uh, you can probably connect over to here. That should be fine, right? And then, you know, more branches out from there. So that all looks good. Now, do you guys all have power up here on the... The rod section all has power. I just got to connect up these two, I think. So you're going to want to run here to these guys. Cool. And that should be all the power we need. Connecting up everything. Uh, now we're going to want to power those two dudes down there. Now I may or may not be able to sneak some power lining in, but I should be able to connect that guy. Get a connection point over to here. And to here. So you're going to go there. You're going to connect these guys up. And that's going to be a lot of power draw, right? We just added a lot of buildings, so we may need another biomass burner or two. But I'm suspecting we ran out of biomass in our fuel. Um, it seems like it hasn't been a long time, but trust me, I was AFK for like half an hour just now. So, um, you know, part of the, the trials and tribulations of recording here. But these guys probably still have fuel because they run a little, you know, and they have the, the exact amount of fuel I would expect them to. Um, yeah, and these guys all ran out. So let me just... Go grab a quick chainsaw. You know what? I'm gonna... Yeah. I really wanted to show this working. So, we are very much wrap past the wrapping up point, but I really wanted to show this working. So let's come back in a minute once I've made enough biofuel to get the thing running. And then once it's running, we'll, we'll, I'll do some more biofuel getting between episodes in a minute. Okay. So FYI, you can cut down the big trees too. I've been cutting down little bushes, but you can totally cut down the big trees. Whoosh. That's what's up. That's what's up. Alright, a bunch of crafting later. I'm suspecting I might need another biofuel generator, but we'll find out if that's true. So let's, you know, snap him in. He's not rotated the same way, and that bothers me. Is that right? Or is he rotated wrong still? Eh, he's still rotated wrong. So it still bothers me. That's funny, he doesn't want to place there. Well, probably because that's not there. Now we're cooking. Cool. So what I'm going to do is split this 200 into four sets of 50. So just right click by the way to split a stack like that and then let's pull the lever sweet so now we're producing um 160 and our current consumption is 148. very strong suspicion that once my ore gets up here and it starts running through all those machines over there we are not going to have enough power uh so on account of that i'm going to start a second batch of burners here can't afford. What can't I afford? I don't have enough iron plates. Well, that would be a thing. Whee! Fun to slide. So we've got the foundations in this episode for what's going to be needed. Wow, look how many iron plates we have. You can tell I was AFK for a while, just from the number of plates I have, right? Right? So we got a very strong foundation for iron ore um, production for tier two stuff, right? Uh, so let's get you kind of lined up like so. And then we can connect our power lines here. Boom. Boom. 
There's already dire wire. Look at it go. <laughs> but I'm gonna split this stack of 80, one like that, and then you guys can do 20 each, and they won't last terribly long, but I'll do a bunch of tree cutting and biofuel producing uh, between episodes. But now we're capable of supporting 280 megawatts. Remember, it looks like biofuel generators self-throttle. So it's gonna take more than 15 seconds to burn through this fuel because we're capable of producing 280, but we're only consuming 150 at the moment. But like I said, once we see this coal or this this ore show up here, which it's now starting to appear, right? So the uh, the conveyor belts are doing their job, right? Producing 60, 60 per belt. So we're 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 maxing out this belt's capabilities. But let's give this thing a minute uh, and see how it goes once it gets down here, and we'll make sure everything's working the way we would like it to, right? And that would be awesome. Now, somebody's red. Red is bad. So I'm suspecting I didn't set my recipe, and that might be why. That's fixed now. Remember, red is bad. Yellow means not working right now, but has, like, everything it needs to work, like power and a recipe. Red means it doesn't have what it needs to work, so missing recipe or missing power. Um, you know, so if I were to, for example, remove this power line, everything over there goes red. See? Reconnect the power line, they're yellow. And green means actually functioning at the moment. So, like, I am actively smelting resources. I am green. Cool? Alright, back in a minute once these guys hit their marks. Alright, so looking good. We've got the iron ore coming into our splitter here. It's easily splitting into these guys. They're going to run at full speed, right? So they're going to hit 100% efficiency because, remember, we're getting 60, but we only need 30 and 30, so evenly splitting. It's very important to pay attention to these numbers. I mean, it's not critical, but if you're looking to be efficient with your factories, which you very much should be looking to be efficient with your factories, you should be paying attention to the numbers, right? So for that reason, I like to emphasize and focus on, like, this is why I'm building it this way. Um, and I realize we're way past the wrapping up point here, but, you know, I don't think anybody's going to complain too much. But I would definitely like to hear how you guys think the series is going so far. So while I'm waiting for this stuff to all show up, I'd like you to... Uh, to, to leave me a comment in the video here, let me know, hey, yeah, Dyer, this is awesome. We're loving this. You could do less of X. You could do more of Y. Let me know what you think you'd like to see, right? So again, we've got the 30 iron ingots coming out of here per minute, right? 100% efficiency. It's running fully. And then you guys need 15 each. So you're each running at 100% efficiency because we've got the splitter. Nice. Same deal here. You're doing the 30, splitting it into these guys, right? And this is where we're pretty close to having a problem um here's not going to be a problem yet because it's 15 and 15 equals the 30 and then the 30 is going to go here we have to wait for this machine to back stuff before we hit 100 percent efficiency but very shortly that'll happen but the output of these three screw sets are going to be 120 items per minute which we need a tier 2 belt to handle so we're going to deal with that next episode. For now, it's wrapping up point. So Devil20 signing off. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We've got a very efficient setup so far. So I'm very happy with this. I'm really, really pleased. I feel like this is, like, it's it, the numbers all add up perfectly, which, you know, that's cool, right? That's really cool. All right. In order to unlock the next uh, phase, though, in order to get Tier 2 belts, we're going to need a significant amount of those reinforced plates. So we will be working on those next episode. Uh, as you can see, Mark II Logistics here need 50 reinforced plates. I could craft them by hand. I might even do that between episodes, just so that I have the Tier 2 belts ready. Yeah, why don't I do that? So I can do Tier 2 belts next episode with the assembler stuff. All right, for now, wrapping up Point Devil 20 signing off. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Take it easy.